big announcement from Microsoft about how they are bringing generative AI into business applications. So think about the likes of ChatGPT, something that can generate AI that can generate content for you. But now this is in context of our sales service, marketing, power apps, all sorts of awesome things. This is all called Copilot. And I'm here to tell you the 10 things you need to know to get across this nice and quickly. Let's kick off with what's happening in the sales application. But I'm saving the best to last because there's one piece at the end here that is actually going to come back and apply to pretty much everything else I'm going to show you. So make sure you stick with me all the way here. So let's have a look at Viva Sales. And this is something that we've seen before, but this is now out of preview and uh, quite real. <laughs> so this is allowing you to create emails, but having that concept of AI generating the email content for you. So in the context of all of your CRM data and all of your previous history of conversation with this customer, it's going to help you generate the response, which is going to save so much time. I mean, don't we all love spending our day writing emails? <laughs> Won't be sorry to see that go. So this is going to be able to give you that suggestion, but you'll notice here that it's leaving you in control. It's not just writing the email for you. It's giving you the suggestion. You decide how much of that you want to use, put it in, change it a little bit, put your own words around it and track the email. Now, the next thing here, this blows me away. We've already seen in Viva Sales that you can get all of the analytics around a meeting. So this is using that Teams transcription and recording, goes through, pulls out sentiment, action items, key things people talked about, what you have to do next and so on. But now what you can do is come in here into Outlook and say, let's create a new email. So imagine you've finished that meeting, you need to send a summary of the meeting to the customer. How long does this take you to do to write all that up? Instead of that, here we go, draft, make a proposal, and it's pulling all of that information in. Now throughout here, Microsoft is very big on transparent, responsible AI. You can see the links here. You can highlight where that's coming from. So you can see what product it's referring to, which customer it's referring to. So this is all linking back to that data in there, as well as where it all came from. Thanks very much. And off we go. Let's have a look now at customer service. And there's a couple of great things in here. The first thing here is being able to solve customer problems in context, but the AI is doing all of the heavy lifting of going through your knowledge base and previous cases and things for you. So we've got an email that's come in here from the customer. I'm the customer service agent here, and I need to reply to this problem. Now, in the past, I would have to have gone through. We've had things like similar cases and knowledge base automatically surfaced, but this is a whole next level of what's going on here, which is Copilot, very similar to what we just saw in Viva Sales here. And now I can compose that reply. And again, it's drawing on the context of my internal knowledge base, all of the cases that we've resolved in the past in order to compose that email. Again, similar experience to what we just saw, where it's giving me the suggestion. I can copy that information across into the email, change any of the wording, just make sure it's all right. So you are remaining in control of that, but this is taking a heap of that work out of researching and finding all those pieces. So this is just upping that level of efficiency with your customer service scenario. Next up, this one, we've got a chat coming in and this time I need to find some information to resolve this. So this is not giving me that email drafting context now. What I've got is almost like an internal chatbot. So the copilot here is working as a chat where I can go in and say, here's what's going on. So my incoming chat has already summarized the conversation for me. And now I'm going to go across and ask copilot to help me with this. So I've got a customer who has this problem. Can you please help? And again, this is going out and searching across all of the stuff that the organization has. This is really changing the way we think about knowledge management and knowledge bases and things um, in bringing that information back in here. We can grab that text, take it back over into the chat and go back and forth with this chat bot and interact between the chat with the customer and the co-pilot here to get more information about what's going on to resolve it. So this is going to make that much easier, especially when you're dealing in real time here with someone in a chat to be able to go in and find these things. It's summarizing that, crafting that response for you. And you can go ahead and take that 
put it back in and respond to the customer there as well. While we're on the subject of chatbots, power virtual agents. We've had the ability to point to a website before, but this is a whole other level now. We're going to say here is a trusted internal SharePoint library or external website. Did you see this? It's like create bot, point it to something, and then you just start using the bot. You don't even have to build anything anymore. First thing it will do is go and check whether or not there are already manually created topics. And if there aren't, it's going to use that trusted source that you've given it. In this case, it's going across into our website here to find something about our maternity leave policy picking all that up and then taking the important points, turning that back into a nice chatty kind of summarized response here. And again, where did this come from? You can see where it's getting that information from. So very transparent. Don't forget internal bots, publishing them to teams. So this is a use of bots that's not just putting it on a like a retail website, but something like this for an HR helper, you can publish it inside teams. And now every time someone wants to ask about your leave policy, I mean, the time it's taken to show this video is pretty much the build effort. Point it to there, publish it in Teams, and you've basically got that done. Let's have a look at Customer Insights, which is the tool that allows us to unify customer data across multiple different sources, and then use that to segment and communicate in a highly personalized way. I love this one. This is this is kind of my favorite, actually, even though I've got the best one, <laughs> the most powerful one at the end here. Natural language query. You are having like a dialogue here with your data. I find and so many users can't do the query of having to navigate through the data model and find this, that or the other. You're just going in here and asking a natural language question. We've seen these kinds of things in Power BI before, but now being able to use this to find segments, this just lowers the level of expertise needed to do really highly sophisticated things. And then it's going to come back and give you results and other suggestions that you might like to explore further. And this idea of helping you to reach customers in segments that you might not even have thought of that it's picking out for you. But it's just making it so much easier to get to that massive amount of data that you've collected about your customers in the organization with no technical skill, genuinely no technical skill required at all. And we are also seeing this come across into the marketing application. So this idea of creating a segment inside the marketing application, but using natural language, this is like a query assist in here where we don't have to navigate through. So the marketing application is natively connected to the sales application. All of your data tables in the sales application can be available here and that can get a lot to navigate through. So that idea of just doing natural language query is amazing. What about writing email content? You don't want to have to do that from scratch anymore, do you? <laughs> you don't even have to go out to chat GPT. We're bringing it right in here. So you can come in. We're writing an email here and putting in these content ideas, giving it these really nice specific prompts for what you want to write about, choosing the tone. Let's generate some suggestions here. And this is going to now write that email content in the tone that you've selected and bring that right in front of you so that you can use that in your email. This is going to make sort of creation of that marketing copy so much easier. Again, the control of being able to say, I'd like to add that to my draft. You'll see here, it's giving you a couple of different suggestions so that you can bring that in, get the right tone that you want, and then edit that up as you would like to. So the world of copywriting has really changed substantially with this technology. Let's have a look now for small businesses. And this is using Business Central. And often AI tools are kind of out of the reach of small business. This one blows me away. This is creating products inside Business Central. And what we've done here is uploaded an image, given it a classification. And what it's doing is taking all of the different attributes. So we've got things like the price and the description and bits and pieces in there. Generate the product description for me. Boom, <laughs> there it is. Now you imagine if you're in a small business, maybe only a couple of people, and you are trying to get new products up and list them out on Shopify and get that happening really quickly. There it is. You can get that straight away. You can also go in and choose which of the factors here should come into play, which ones are important and which ones don't need to be part of the description. What kind of style do you want? What kind of format do you want and generate that draft? You can make the changes that you need. Same concept concept that we've had all the way along here, that you're still in control of that final draft. And then once you're done, we can just go click add item to Shopify and your product is out there ready to sell to the world. Supply chain. 
This is bringing in news items. So this is starting to pick up on things that might affect your supply chain, weather, geopolitics, all of those kinds of things, and highlight them for you. So bringing these insights straight to you to say, this order is likely to be affected by this situation that's going on. So we've got that like proactive suggestions coming through, but beauty of Copilot here, same kind of thing in helping you craft these emails and so on. We can say, please contact whoever is affected by this. And again, it's got all of that information there that it's drawn in to help you create that draft, send it off and very little work involved. But that's a proactive thing, very quickly turning into sending notifications. And so now here we go. I did promise you a big one at the end. This is bringing this generative AI capability into Power Platform using AI Builder. So imagine you get heaps and heaps of emails all the time. And how do you deal with the amount of incoming emails? What you can do is come in here and use Flow to say when an email comes in, we're going to pick out this model and look at all these different things you can do. Summarize things, um, pull out news items. Or there's about like 12 different things in here. I really have to get in and explore this or create your own custom model to say summarize an email based on this. This is a little test that you can do in here. So what you could do now is if you're getting dozens or hundreds of emails coming through is to just have them summarized for you and sent that through to you in a notification document of some kind. So the example we're seeing here is to send it as a Teams notification. This opens up the whole world of being able to create low code, custom workflows, automations, apps to feed back into all of that other dynamic stuff or your own custom apps or whatever it is that you want to do using this model. I would love to hear what you think you might be able to do with this. And I'm certainly going to have a play with this. Stay subscribed. Keep watching. Let me know what your favorite thing was here in the chat. And thank you very much for watching.